What a day. What a weekend. The sun came up this morning. The Leafs didn't lose last night. The attack. So I, 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 that's a good Sunday for me. Um, but wow, what a week, eh? It was a week ago... My family and I were in Ottawa, at a church in Ottawa, doing the missionary thing, and making some COVID-19 jokes, and then all the world seemed to explode. Um, Went to the attack game on Wednesday, which turned out to be the last one for a while, so I'm kind of glad I got to do that. Um, And then, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, uh, everybody began to cancel pretty much everything um, in, in the world of sports, which is fairly important to me. And then on Friday, all the schools began to, to close. It was an interesting day. Uh, Alana and I were, my wife Alana and I, were down in Toronto for some meetings. And our daughter, who goes to Redeemer, um, was kind of giving us a running update of the schools that had closed. And, and, and their school had not closed yet. And... So we were at some meetings, we went to see our other, our older daughter who works in Mississauga, we went to see her, and then we were going to go see our our daughter Kim in, in, uh, at Redeemer, and kind of while we're on the way, uh, they, they got word that they had just canceled the rest of their semester. So we walked into their, their dorm house, where six college girls had just discovered that their, you know, that their, their family was ending, (laughs) and the look on their face was just of utter shock. And I immediately went into dad mode. And I told some bad dad jokes, which seemed to help a little bit. And then I gave my daughter a big hug, and I said, we will not allow this virus to take away our humanity. How we act as the family in the next two months is going to be our legacy for a long time. And God, you know, I, I watch enough, I've watched enough um, war movies and, and sports movies and all of that, and you're sitting there in, the, in the, the sports movie, you're sitting there in the locker room, it's a war movie, you're on a, a helicopter or something, and they said, this is what we've trained for. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the family of God, and this is what we're here for. And so let's be a light. You guys got a lighthouse. Let's be a light in this community. And let's show the love of God and the family of God. It's, um, it was also last week, last Saturday, that uh, Pastor Dave gave me a call and asked me if um, I would come and I would speak. And even though it was a busy week and, and my first thought was, you know, I don't know if I have time to prepare, of course I was going to come because Dave's a friend but also it's the family, right? And we're, we're the family, and we, we work together, and we, we come together, and we stay together. Um, and it's an honor to be here. I, I, I've been reading the updates on Facebook, so I, I know that Dave probably is not watching right now. But I also know him well enough to know that he is going to watch this back, and someone is going to get his critique notes. <laughs> So, Dave, when you watch this, know this, that you are prayed for, that me and whoever else comes to speak here is only keeping this spot warm because you are going to be back here and you are going to be sharing with this congregation again, and we believe that. All right, let's get into the the Word this morning. But before we get into the Word, I want to talk a little bit about news. Is that better? Okay. All right. <laughs> it was when I rubbed my face. Right? Oh, I didn't rub my face, Alana. Um, anyway, let me know if it's rub again and we can switch it out. But uh, news. In, uh, we live in Cambodia most of the time. And in Cambodia we get, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a news junkie. I like to watch the news. And so in Cambodia we get these two news channels. We get CNN and we get Fox News. Wow. There are days when I'm wondering if they're covering the same story. <laughs> right? 
you got one is way over here, and the other one is way over there. And yet they're talking about the same thing, but you wouldn't know it. Now, there's also online options for those of us who like to watch the news. We like to, uh, we like to, we like to watch and we like to listen to news that fits our mindset. A lot of times we're not looking on the internet or on TV, we're not looking for different opinions than the one that we have. We're looking for opinions that support our the opinion we already have and our own mindset. You know, as Christians, sometimes we can be the same way. We have a view of God that's been created by our culture or by our upbringing or by our personal preferences. And we often seek out inputs that match our view of God already. A lot of times we're not looking to expand our view of God, but to reinforce what we already believe. You know, sometimes we like to think of God as, as a big teddy bear, as daddy. Sometimes we like to think of God as a judge. And we will seek out inputs that support those things and those views. But what I want to talk to you this morning about is that the God we hear about is the God that we're going to believe in. The God that we hear about is the God that we're going to believe in. Now I want to read to you from uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 3. Now, this is not my purse. This is a handmade Cambodian Bible cover. And if you're interested, I, I, I know a guy. Who's actually a girl. But also, I'm f- almost 55, so I got the big print Bible. So um, I forgot to make a slide of, of verses 1 to 3, but I thought I, you know, I could probably just turn this around and you guys could all just read it. Anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan, to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live, by keeping all his decrees and commandments that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Lord, hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey, so that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. So the first thing we're going to talk about is to know God and God's rules. You see, the Israelites are about to start a new chapter in their lives. They're about to enter the promised land. And a new opportunity, a new, a new chapter has both opportunity and danger. Opportunity because things are new and there's other things you can do and there's, uh, you know, different uh, um, projects that you can pursue. Danger because they are losing all of the pillars that they built their life on, right? Um, Pillars that, you know, they hung on to in times of trouble. One of the things that we do in Cambodia is we work with university students. And we've run a dorm for Christian students for many years. And, uh, and, and we, they come and they stay with us for four years. And during that time, we disciple them. And we, we you know, we, we study the Bible together. And we provide a nurturing environment for them to be able to grow in their faith. And then, after four years, they leave. They go on to their careers. They go back to their villages. They go wherever they're going. And as we began to look at the students that we were working with, we began to discover that after they left us, they would fall away from their faith, more often than not. Because they believed, they had left that environment where they had grown, and where it was secure, and where they could grow in their faith. Um, As as someone who grew up in the 80s, this was also not uncommon with, with youth groups in our churches, where students would, would, you know, have a strong faith and go off to university and sometimes um, lose their faith. 
And as we looked at what was going on with our dorm students, we, we began to realize that we needed to make sure that they were believing in God and not believing in the missionary. That they were believing in God and not just liking being part of the group. And so we began to have to change some of our strategies so that that would happen. And what God wants the children of Israel and us to do is to believe in him. Not believe in, uh, not just like coming or being a part of something larger, but to believe in God. We need to remember that when we encounter a new situation. And we need to fear God. How often do we think, how often do we do things because we don't want to be punished? I want you to think about that for a minute. How often do you do things because you fear punishment? Okay? When you drove out here today, I, how, how many of you actually live in Sobel? Okay, a little more than I thought. So most of us drove out here today, okay? Um, how many of you did not go over 100 kilometers an hour? <laughs> right. Uh, if you did, I don't want to know. But you, there was nobody out there today. <laughs> but no one goes, you know, in, in, this is Ontario. We go, okay, you can go 20 over and you're probably okay. Right? But, <laughs> right? <laughs> But we don't go over 20. <laughs> Why? Not because, oh, it's unsafe or I might crash, but because we don't want to get a ticket. <laughs> it's not because we believe in the speed limit. It's because we don't want to get a ticket. Right? How often as... Now, how many of you had a curfew when you were growing up? You had to be home by 11 or, or whatever. Yeah. You all right? Now, you may not have believed in that, but you got home for the curfew because you didn't want to get punished. <laughs> sometimes I think, I feel we've lost a healthy fear of God because sometimes I think if we had a greater fear of God, then we would, would be less likely to sin. When I'm driving, and this is my issue and I'm working on it, but when I'm driving and someone cuts me off or does something that I don't think is right, I like to get right up behind them. <laughs> and my wife will say, what are you doing? And I say, I'm putting the fear of Bill in them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we need to, I, I think there are times when we really just need to have more of the fear of God in us in what we do. Enjoy life. Now, we've all heard the idioms, or the idiom anyway, happy wife, happy life. It's a guy who's been married for a number of years. I tell you, that is very true. In Cambodia, they have one. It's called do good, get good. Right? It's a, it's a Buddhist society. It's kind of a spin on, on, on karma. Um, you know, if you want to have a good life, then do good things, because by doing good things, you're going to have a good life. In Scripture, it says to, it's telling the Israelites, you will enjoy a long life. How? God made us. He created us. God knows us. God knows what is best for us. The Purpose-Filled Life was a book that was quite popular for a number of years. It was quite popular for a number of years here, and then um, I knew when the popularity of the purpose-filled life had ended, because then in Cambodia we got all kinds of, of copies of the book. <laughs> See, it, 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 in Cambodia we get the programs, we get the books uh, when North America is done with them. <laughs> oh, we got these old books. Well, we'll send them to the missionaries. So um, I, I did the purpose-filled life probably about five years after you did, but... You know, the, the whole premise is that we've been created to do something. That God has made us special, have woven us together in our mother's wombs so, and given us a task to do. And of course, the tricky part is figuring out what that task is. But ladies and gentlemen, there is no greater feeling than doing what it is that you know that you were made to do. It might seem scary, and it might be hard, and it might mean sacrifice, but when we're doing what we're made to do, there's no greater feeling than that. I'm going to move on to 
the next point, to be all in. I'm going to read verses uh, from Deuteronomy 6. I'm going to read verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Lord, O hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Oh, that was it. Okay. Which brings us to the next point, that God, that he is the only one. You see, in North America, this seems obvious. Well, of course there's only one God. He's God. It's kind of his name. But in North America, we really, and one of my years overseas has taught me this, we really don't understand spiritual warfare as much as we should. And we really don't understand the spiritual world as much as we should. In this world, there is, there's God, but there's also spirits. And there's many spirits. And some are good and some are bad. There's what we call small G gods, spirits who rule over parts, geographical locations, territorial spirits. In Cambodia, they understand this. And there are spirits, they understand, that rule over certain villages, parts of cities. And the people who live in those villages or parts of that city will worship these spirits out of fear. Most of these are, are evil spirits, and they will worship them out of fear so that nothing bad will happen to them. So that when I teach this passage in Cambodia, it has a whole different meaning and a whole different, different bent. The only one God, you need to worship him. That means you need to take off the spirit strings that you're walking around with on. That means that you need to destroy the, 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 the spirit house that many people have in front of their houses. That you don't worship any other being, any other God, but the Heavenly Father. That one true God. Now, in North America, we don't worship territorial spirits. But many times, we worship Things. We end up worshiping things that, without realizing that that's what we're doing. Money. Money's popular. <laughs> but also, there can be good things that become an idol for us. That become a, an object of worship for us. Like our job. Or our family. And that's a tricky one. Because God has called us to serve and to worship him first. He's given us a family, and we need, to, um, we need to provide for our family, and we need to love our family, but we cannot love our family more than we love God. And that can be a tricky one to figure out. So God is saying to love 100%, to love with all of our heart, that God is the only one, not also that God is the only one, but we can't also, you know, be love 100% other people or other things and God. To love God with all of our soul. Every decision that we make, we make with God. He is part of every decision. My hope is this morning when you decided whether to come here or to watch at home, that was a decision you made through prayer. And not simply through convenience. And to love God with all of our strength. We do all that we do as if we are doing it for God. Whatever your job is, we're, you're doing it as if God is your boss. We're always thinking about God. And we're always thinking about how we can please him. And we're always thinking about how we can do better for him. All of us. All the time. Which leads me to my next point, and that is worldview. In North America, we like to separate the physical from the spiritual, and the individual from the corporate. You know, this part of my life, uh, you know, that's just what I do, and, and God really, you know, uh, he's not really all that concerned about the decisions I make over there. Or uh, this, has, this is me. This is me making a decision. And, you know, 
how the larger group, say the church, how it affects them, that really isn't as important as it is for me. Some things God cares about, some things he doesn't. In Asia, where I've spent a good part of my life, it's completely different. There is no separation. Religion is a part of everyday decisions in one's life. The corporate is more important than the, the, the individual, which is actually quite similar to the, the culture of which the, the scriptures were written originally. A few years ago, I watched a, a movie from India. I don't speak Indian, so I was reading the subtitles. Um, you're going to have a lot of time, so maybe check out some foreign films uh, over the next couple of months. Um, but in this movie, it was the classic story, the, 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 chi the, the child was home helping the family run their business, and then suddenly they had the opportunity to go to university on the other side of the country, and they got a full scholarship, and it was all paid for. But if they left, it was going to be difficult for the family. Now, if this is a North American movie, the parents say, you go, and you get that, you go, and you live the best life, your best life right? And uh, we'll make it work, and we'll bounce, and it'll happen, and everybody will be really happy at the end. Well, this is, in this Indian movie, coming from a collective culture, they said, no, I can't go. I got to stay, and I got to help the family. I'm going to turn down university, and everybody was, yeah, that's great, right? <laughs> so it's a different, and if you're watching that from one culture or from another, you have a very different reaction and a very different feeling. In Cambodia, the slogan on all of their national, um, on their letterhead and, and the flag and, and, and their, their coat of arms and all of that is three words. People, or sorry, nation, religion, king. It's all one. Their nation is just as important to them as their religion and their king is seen as a god. And so there is no separation of church and state the church and the state are one. Now the religion they're talking about is Buddhism, but that also affects the culture because it's a collective culture. And when we read the scriptures, we need to understand that that's where that is coming from. And I believe as a North American culture, there's a great deal that we can learn from the collective from thinking of the corporate above the individual. And I think these next two months are going to be an excellent opportunity for us to be able to explore that and to figure out what that looks like. Deuteronomy chapter 6, I'm going to read verse now, verses 6 to 9. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them to your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. See, we need to tell others. First of all, how do we tell others? How do we share the love of God? Feel. It's the first one. We are to impress these things on our children's hearts. And we're to have them on our hearts. An impression leaves a mark. Right? An impression is, you press down, remember back in the, days in Sunday school and you had the plasticine and you pressed down on it and you had the little cutout things and uh, you know I'm, I'm, th I'm from the age where before they made the little things that you cut out so you use mom's cookie cutters and hopefully she washed them again or else you had plasticine in the cookies right it made an impression it left a mark and it's a feeling that leaves what we're talking about here is a feeling that leaves a mark so you walk into a place, a church or a home, you can feel it, right? 
you can feel the Holy Spirit's presence. And I felt it here this morning. And as, we, as people gathered and as we were singing, I was getting pumped up because I could feel it. And I think you know what I'm talking about. And if you walk into a home of, of a believer, and, and there, oftentimes you can feel the Spirit's presence. And there's a, uh, there's a calming. There's a, uh, a feeling of, of, of safety, if you will. Now, there's other times you walk into other places, and the feeling is completely different. <laughs> and you go, yeah, this isn't right. <laughs> I remember um, when I was studying religions, and we went into the temple of, a, of, another, of another faith. And the feeling in there was just, I'll be honest with you, it was just creepy. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to kind of get out of there and kind of, boy, and maybe go into a church for a bit just to, to, to change the feeling a little bit. But that's what God's talking about here. See, as God's children, we need to work to create that environment of the Spirit. We need to invite the Spirit's presence so that the environment that we are creating is a place of safety, a place of comfort. In Cambodia, when someone, when a believer, foreigner or national, rents a new house, buys a new house, goes into a new house, they invite people over and we pray through the house. We pray through every room, casting out whatever evil might be in there and asking the Holy Spirit to fill it. And again, you can feel it. You can feel the difference when we're done. How do we do that here? We can pray. Pray through your house. Post scripture in your house. This week I discovered YouTube has a lot of free worship. And after watching too much news, I said, that's enough. And I just put on, uh, Joel will like what I'm about to say. I put on Hillsong. <laughs> Joel McCallum and I have a running Hillsong thing going. And... and but, you know, it was, it was free, so I put it on. But, but it changed the atmosphere. And we can do that. Put on Christian music in your house. And how we act. Are we in our homes, in the gatherings that we at, are we bringing, bringers of peace, or are we just working things up a little bit more? And we can work hard at being the peaceful ones. Talk about God. This is with our ears. We need to talk about God with our neighbors and with our children. Scripture says we need to have the Scripture written on our hearts. How do we do that? Memorization, discussing spiritual things, spiritual um, disciplines, something that I've, in the last year or so, kind of been trying to figure out a little bit more myself. What are we listening to? I mentioned the news, you know, I, I actually, to be honest with you, I was interested when all sports ended, and I watch a lot of Sportsnet, and I watch a lot of TSN, and I thought, what are these guys going to do? <laughs> and they don't know what to do, and that's fairly obvious, so it's kind of fun to watch them kind of stumbling around, but they, they just kind of turned into the news. I thought, well, this is, you know, you guys are trying to be the news, but you're not as good as it as the news people are. Um, but what are we listening to? We have, we got a lot of time coming up. And it is our choice as to what we are going to input, right? <laughs> and we can keep watching the, the, the news uh, or the sports who try to be news. Or we can, you know, as I said, there's lots of free worship on, uh, on, on YouTube. And um, we can allow that to fill our homes and our minds. Cambodia is always noisy. There, when, when we come back from Cambodia, we have trouble going to sleep because our homes are too quiet. We have to, we have to turn on fans um, to get some white noise, but we also, we just need to, um, we, we sometimes we'll, we'll get some, some, some app on the phone that sounds like cars and, and honking and, and all that stuff, dogs barking, so that we can sleep. <laughs> Because it's too quiet here. It's kind of creepy sometimes. In Cambodia, it's always noise, all the time. And so my friend, Pastor David, who's the pastor of a church in, in Phnom Penh, capital city of Cambodia, is a musician. And he's a famous musician. If, he's a composer, and he plays the keyboard. And, and if you're watching the 
Cambodian equivalent of MTV, you're going to see Pastor David's name all over the you know, composer and playing. He's a studio musician. He's sought after. And so he has begun to make Christian Cambodian Christian music to kind of fill that noise void. That, you know, it's going to be noisy anyway, so he makes these CDs that people can play so that at least the noise is uplifting noise and noise of worship. Post them, it says in the, in the scripture. Eyes. Tie strings. The strings are to remind the people of God's promises. Post them in many places. All over the world, as you'll see, and, and uh, I'm looking around if, if we have any, do you have any scripture posted here? Not yet. You're in a building program. But many churches in the world, there will be scripture verses like painted on the wall. There's, of course, crosses, as you have. You can go on there. There's, uh, I think there's another picture there. Or maybe, um, okay, actually, no. I, I'm, okay, just stay there. Um, so that when people look around, what are they seeing? They're seeing scripture. Also, it's what we watch. When I was growing up in the 80s, my mother told me that I was not to go to the movie house. <laughs> How many of you ever got that one? How many of you know, I've ever heard to refer to as the movie house, <laughs> right? <laughs> what, Bill, what would you do if Jesus came back and he found you in the movie house? Well, that scared me. So I'd go to the movies, just praying that Jesus didn't come back Well, in the two hours I was in there. Because if he comes back and I'm in the movie house, ah, right? So remember going to see Benji. <laughs> you know, I hope this is over soon because then I get out and it, whoo. Now, of course, we just bring the movie house into our house or on our tablet or on our computer. What are we feeding in? What are we allowing to come in? Cambodia is pretty low tech. And, you know, if they, sometimes they don't have power in their villages, let alone TV. So what do they do? They sit around and they sing. The Christians sit around and they sing hymns, they sing songs. It's kind of cool. I was up in this um, tribal village once where they grow coffee. If you, if you buy Vietnamese coffee, it's actually coming from Cambodia. Um, so I'm in one of these villages where, where they, a, a coffee village, and they sit around and they have a glass, glass, and, and a little drip thing, and, and they wait till this is about this much coffee in, and you're going to love this. And then they pass it around, and everybody takes a sip. <laughs> and that's all you need, because it's like, whoa. <laughs> and we'd sit around, and we sip coffee, and we sing hymns. And then, of course, you can't go to bed, because you're just, like, caffeined out the ears. Although we find that if you, at a certain point, it knocks you out. So you've got to just keep drinking the caffeine until you, you can fall asleep. Of course, I'm a Dutch guy, so it didn't matter anyway. I could drink caffeine and go to bed. But they get around and they sing. What do we do? How do we do it? I think we need to be intentional in what it is we're allowing in and how we allow it in. So, not only is it important that we have Scripture on our hearts, it needs to be all of Scripture. So, oh, said in the opening, the God that we hear about is the God we're going to believe in. We need to make sure that we're not just cherry-picking the scriptures that make us, that, it, that reinforce what we already, the, the bent that we already have, but that we're allowing all of scripture to speak to us. Now, I'm a missionary. And I'll be honest with you, my plan was at this point, even two days ago, to go into my little missionary spiel here. That God is not only our comforter, but he's called us into the world, and he's called us to share the gospel. I was going to go into this little spiel about how man is lost, and, we need to, and, and people need to hear about him, how we need to go to the ends of the earth and complete the great commission. And I believe all of that. But this week happened. And it's all of those things. God is our comforter. God is 
also gets angry. God has called us to go to the ends of the earth. God has called us to be a light. At different times, the Holy Spirit leads us to do different things. And at different times, the Holy Spirit leads us to scriptures that will highlight different attributes of God. Right now, we need to be le- reading and meditating on scripture that God is in control. That this does not, what's going on, COVID-19 does not make God nervous. God has not been quarantined, nor will he be. And we need to share this with the world around us, both in our speech and in our actions. So let's go out and let's be peace in a world that is becoming increasingly chaotic right now. And if you have a spare roll of toilet paper, maybe give that to your neighbor. I invite you to pray with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you that you love us. We thank you that you have made us, that you have called us. We thank you that at different times, in different situations, we are called to do different things. And we realize that at this moment, we are called to be your hands and your feet and your comfort to a struggling world around us. And Lord, you have made us for a time as, like this. This is what we've been training for. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give us the courage to go and to do what you've called us to do, which right now is to be a comfort and to share your peace and your stability during this time. Lord, I thank you for all who are here. I thank you for everyone who is watching at home. And we pray that you would continue to bind us together as a family, a family that is going out into the world to help those around us. Amen.